In the embryonic stage of the strategy's blueprint, it took form in June of 1937, undergoing metamorphoses in response to the dynamic shifts in military landscapes and exigencies. A pivotal metamorphosis transpired subsequent to the annexation of Austria by the Nazi regime in March 1938. Following the tumultuous events of the May crisis that year, characterized by a tense atmosphere where Germany ostensibly yielded under the admonitions from Czechoslovakia's allies, namely France and Britain, the strategy received a designated deadline, fixing the offensive to unfold no later than October 1, 1938. On May 30, 1938, Adolf Hitler affixed his signature to the directive, articulating his unalterable decision to dismantle Czechoslovakia in the imminent future. Czechoslovakia's principal confederate, France, in concert with Britain, embraced an appeasement policy towards Nazi Germany. The zenith of this policy manifested in the ratification of the Munich Agreement on September 30, 1938. This accord entailed the participation of leaders from Britain, France, Germany, and Italy culminating in the cession of predominantly German-inhabited territories of Czechoslovakia, identified as the Sudetenland, to Germany. These areas encompass strategically vital border fortifications for Czechoslovakia. Consequently, owing to the territorial forfeiture, the military offensive scheme became antiquated. The dissolution of Czechoslovakia reached its denouement in March 1939 when Slovakia ostensibly attained independence under the sway of Nazi Germany. The residual Western territories of Czechoslovakia succumbed to German occupation and were rebranded as the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. Subsequently, the nomenclature Fall Grun was ascribed to blueprints associated with an incursion into Ireland. Plan of Attack In tandem with delineating specific military objectives, the directive for Fall Grun underscored the paramount importance of political groundwork. The approach encompassed coercive tactics from Nazi Germany aimed at intimidating the Czechoslovak authorities, coupled with the orchestration of support among the ethnic German minority populace within the nation to bolster military endeavors. A contrived incident would be employed as a pretext for instigating hostilities, with endeavors directed towards persuading Poland and Hungary to assert their territorial claims against Czechoslovakia. The military maneuvering was meticulously fashioned to prioritize celerity and unpredictability, Collaborating seamlessly with the Air Force, the Army aimed to orchestrate an abrupt assault by infiltrating and outflanking the border fortifications contiguous to Germany. Five formidable army formations amassed along the western peripheries of Czechoslovakia were designated to execute the offensive. The central thrust of the campaign was charted from the west, focusing on Bohemia in the trajectory of Pulzi and Prague. Simultaneously, a converging movement in Moravia, advancing from the north towards Olomouc and the south towards Brno, sought to impede the Czechoslovak army's eastward retreat into Slovakia. Even the Danube flotilla would be enlisted to bolster the military efforts. In a forward-looking stance towards potential future conflicts, the directive also enjoined, whenever viable, the safeguarding of Czechoslovakia's industrial prowess. Political pressure in the preparatory phases of the undertaking, a pivotal role was assumed by the radicalized faction within the ethnic German minority populace in Czechoslovakia, coalesced under the Sudan German Party SDP, mirroring closely the attributes of the Nazi Party in the neighboring realm of Germany. Tasked by Hitler during a meeting in Berlin in March 1938, the leader of the party, Konrad Henlein, received instructions. His charge was to cultivate a fraught atmosphere in engagements with the Czechoslovak authorities, propounding demands for substantial political reforms deliberately crafted to be untenable, all while harboring no authentic intention of reaching a resolution until Germany was poised for military intervention. As the climate of crisis intensified throughout the year, the Western allies of Czechoslovakia, particularly Britain, exerted formidable pressure on the president of Czechoslovakia, Edvard Benes, and his administration. The objective was to coerce them into acquiescence with the Sudan German party by acceding to their demands. Undeclared German-Czechoslovak War Following a confrontational oration by Hitler in Nuremberg on September 12, 1938, wherein he denounced the intolerable subjugation of Czechoslovakia's ethnic German populace, tumult unfurled in the Sudetenland. Reacting to the intervention and imposition of martial law by Czechoslovak forces, 
the leadership of the Sudan German Party, SDP, absconded across the border into Germany. It was from this sanctuary that Conrad Henlein proclaimed, on September 17, 1938, the formation of a paramilitary unit dubbed the Sudetendeutsch Free Corps. This armed and trained force, originating in Germany, instigated cross-border offensives against targets in Czechoslovakia. Despite the Munich Agreement efficaciously quashing any immediate potential for Czechoslovak military resistance, Edward Benner, serving as the president of the Czechoslovak government in exile stationed in Britain during the Second World War, formally designated September 17, 1938, as the commencement date of the undeclared hostilities between Germany and Czechoslovakia. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal and Patreon in the description box below.